Harvey, I assume you're on. I am here. Okay. Right, I'm going to start to right away with the names and then we'll go into the Gemara. A year of sponsorships, a year of learning to an Arnie Gerlich, and memory of Michael Pillman and Philip Mann, and Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch and Beryl Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Yosef Meir Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Henry Rivka Pro Rosna Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, and memory of family murdered in the Holocaust, Arav Tzvi Hirsch Ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Ben Ephraim, Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Pestel Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Sharon and Fred Liska, their family and many friends, in memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman Edelbas Yaakov. Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedell, Irving and Pearl Kaplan. Friends of Avi Gidler, Avramea Ben Shimon and Martha Gidler, Charna Bad Yeshaya. Children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova, but Yisrael Dov in her memory. Friends of Joe Wolf, Yosef Ben Chaim, Charlie Gelfenstein, and Sam Levine in memory of Ramona Levine, Rachel Mata, but Asher. Friends of Nina Monest, and Nechama Azna, but Yitzchak Ahron. Many friends of Stephen Vigder, Zecher Nishmat Simcha, Melech Ben Meir Leib Halevi. Month of Learning by Rebecca Lewis and Susan Watonsky, in memory of their aunt and sister, Miriam Bad Yosef for Devora, Aaron and Mel Haller, in memory of her mother, Malka Rachel Bad Yehuda Lane. A Week of Learning by Mira and Herschel Sennett, in memory of her mother, Shosha Bad Avram Alevi, and his mother, Reitzah Bad Yitzchak Yaakov, by Clara and Jonas Wazer, in memory of her father, Moshe Ben Yisrael HaKohen, by Oscar and Shelley Moe, in memory of his mother, Rachel Bad Naftali, <laughs> and his father, Shlomo Ben Yitzchak, by Isaac and Edda Novik, in memory of his mother, Miriam Gidl Bas Chanuch, and Judith and Michael Poretsky, in memory of her father, Yaakov Yitzchak Ben Hirsch Feigl. May the Shamas have an Aliyah, Crank or a Fiyah, without the Yeshua Shamas Leah, and the Chol Ben Israel, a good Gaben Shiyah. How do you know where my tomorrow was? Didn't have corporate service, I guess. <laughs> Okay, where are we today? Yeah, thank you. We'll talk about that. Everybody's a Talmud Chacham. All right, Acharsha Yeshuvu B'nai Yisrael. We're getting back to finishing up the discussion of the uh, order of the uh, Philos Brachas in uh, Shmona Esrei, right? That's, I think, where we were. All right. Okay, and uh, we finished up sort of a little bit on the top of Yudchet Amud Aleph. Okay, where it said, Achai Yashuv B'nei Yisrael, Uvikshu et Hashem Elohehem Be'et David Malkam. Okay. So I pointed out to uh, Michael afterwards, the, at the end of the shiur yesterday, that uh, the question that I think Ted had raised, okay, yesterday, all right, we got talking about that. Michael indicated yesterday that it's going to come up in today's Gemara, which it will. And I gave him the answer that academic uh, authorities that study tefillah uh, suggest. That question, which we're going to see later on in the Amud, is if the Anshe Knesset Hagdola established a set order for the Shmona Esrei, what then did Shimon Hafakuli do? Okay, that was your question, right? So uh, the Gemara, as Michael pointed out to us yesterday, is going to give us an answer. The question is, is it satisfactory? We'll see when we get to it. But at this point, let's use that as our context 
to, as we'll now continue on the second line on Yud Chet. <clears throat> okay, Amud Aleph, V'kevan Sheba David Ba'otat Fila. Okay, the implication is we have a reference to rebuilding Jerusalem and the restoration of the Davidic dynasty in the same bracha. <clears throat> okay, question is, could those have been, or should those have been done in two separate brachot. If they were done in two separate brachot, then clearly we would have still had the number 18. If that's the case, then when they added Lamal Shinim, okay, how many would that give us? 19. Okay. If, on the other hand, you claim that Re rebuilding Jerusalem and the restoration of the Davidic dynasty is in the same bracha. And then you add Lamal Shinim, what does that give you? 18. Okay, so that catches us in right to the issue. Shneamar, Vavi Osim El Hakadshi, Vesimachtim Bavet Filati, citing that Pasuk, bring me to the holy mountain. Rejoice on that place of my worship. But Kevan Shabbat Fila Bad Avoda. So the Gemara, however, does not deal here with that question that I just presented. Okay? We'll see what happens. However, it goes on to tell us once we get to the point there, we then come now to what I will call the last three blessings at the end of the Amida, okay? Well, first of which is Avoda, right? Modim Anachnulach, right? In our Mamala. It says Avoda is Ritzay, Ritzay. Okay, sorry. Ba Avoda. Shneamar Olotehem V'zivcheyem L'ratzon Al Mizbachim. Okay, so therefore referring then to the uh, offerings, right? V'kevan Shabbat Avoda. Since we come to Avoda, Ba'ata Toda, then comes the Modim after Ritzay. Okay? All right. Shneamar, Zoveach Toda, Yechabdein, Yechabdeneni. Okay? So it follows the word Zoveach, then Toda. So using that Pasuk, that's why they give them the rationale that the uh, Toda comes after Avoda. Okay? So the Gemara now asks, Umara ulomar Birkat Kohanim Achar Hoda. And what's the basis then that we have the priestly blessing, right? Following the Avoda blessing, right? Modim. What's the fact after that? Dichtiv, why? Because it's written. Vaisa Aharon et Yadav El Ha'am. Okay, raise this, all right? V'yavarchem, we bless him. V'yidar ma'asot ha'chatat v'ha'ola v'ha'shlomi. Okay? And that is the implication of the Pasuk being that he did the Gerkas uh, Konim. Then it says v'yidar ma'asot. Okay? Following that. So eh, the Gemara asks, e'ma kodem avoda. Okay? Maybe the Gerkas Konim then should come before the avoda blessing, before it said, lo sakadatach, don't even consider that. Dechtiv, why? Because it's written, vaidor me asot achatad vagomer. Okay, mi ketiv la asot, is it written to do them? Me asot ketiv. I'm going to translate that as from having done them. Okay, the implication being, that the language of the Pasuk clearly implies that those were done and then afterwards came Birkat Kohen. Okay? Velimra Achar Havoda. So let us learn then that it should be done after Havoda. Right? But, right? So what happens before Hoda'a, after Havoda? Lo Salkadata. Don't even consider it again, says the. Right? Right? Why? Dichti, because it's written. Zoveach toda. You have the zoveach, the offering, 
then you have toda, then you have thanksgiving. So Gemara raises an interesting question. My chazit the samach dahai, what is the reason that you decided to make the association vis-a-vis -vis this particular pasuk? I'm saying, why don't we make the association on a different pasuk, on a different one? Okay, mistabra avoda v'hoda'a chada milsahi. Why? Because it's our opinion, okay, that the avoda and hoda'a, okay, carrying out of the worship and acknowledging, giving thanks, is in other words, kind of like a single concept, a single thing, okay? Umara ulamar sim shalom achar Okay, and what was the basis then to recite sim shalom after priestly blessing? Dichtiv, because it's written, v'samu et shmi al b'nei Yisrael v'ani avarchim. It says that I will place my name, the job of the Kohanim is to bless them with Hashem's blessing. And what is going to basically be Hashem's blessing? Shalom. The blessing of Hashem is peace. Hashem et Amo Ba Shalom. He blesses them with peace. Okay. Let's go on. This is the This is the question. Ted, here you go. All right, All right. May since 120 elders, umayhem kama neviim, and among them some prophets, namely, right? We said that would include Haggai, Zechai, and Malachi. Questionable if it's Mordechai, I know. Okay, tiknut fila al haseder, and they established the Shmona Esrei in a fixed order. Shimon Hafakuli, Maicha Haste, Maiyiste. So, what did Shimon Hafakuli do? Okay, so here comes the Gemara's answer to your question. Okay, Shechachum, the Chazar Visedrum. They forgot them and then afterwards they, it was reestablished. Okay, this Brighton. Okay, giving this answer. Mikan Ve'elech. Asur le saper b'shiv chol shel a kaddish baruch. This is a new topic. Right, new topic. Right. Just want to mention here, Archbishop. Yeah. Questions. How is it possible that they keep out? Because I mean, obviously everybody davens. Archbishop says they daven three times a day. How could they forget? It says they didn't forget the order. They forgot the reasons for the order. They didn't sort the reasons. Okay. Which I thought was actually rather nice. Yeah, that's an excuse. <laughs> right. But when they re when they reestablish the base on this one, yeah. The Anche Knesset the Baila did this at, at the very beginning. Right. So it is possible that since they were on us again, Tila was not so common. That brought by some of the Rishayim. But, the whole, but it's still not a great answer. No, it's not a great answer. The, the art scroll gives a not terrible answer. That what they forgot was this price. So they knew the sequence. They didn't know the why. And he came and he looked in an old library somewhere and he dug up this price. So why can't the art scroll then with that suggestion Cite one of the Rishonim who might give it. Because I don't think there are any exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Also, you have to take into account that everything is all past, and there's a lot of stories from the time of Shemu. They can write the Hanukkah that it was for 20 years, you know, in time of war and everything else. People's minds are not set on uh, they can forget a lot of things. Okay. That's I could come up with another two or three answers also. <laughs> Could be. My better question is why is this guy the second half of the year and not in the Well, because they it would said certain things have to be read in order, remember? So it mentioned Halel, Kriyachma, 
and and uh, Shmon Asra. That's why it connected. Okay, I'm not going to go into the academic answer, but That's a good answer. it is a good answer. But nevertheless, okay, the, the point. Yes, then. But Asra also says that the sequence, the order is so well known. You go to any jewels, he does regularly. He knows the order by heart, even. Right. That would have been forgotten. Okay. That's okay. So that's why. So that Zev's point is supports the presentation right. of the art scroll that says it was not that they forgot the order; they forgot the rationale right. behind right. the order. Okay. It was the, only after Fish Corbin that they stopped. Okay. We we could go into more uh, that into more detail. Let me just give two quick items because I want us to move on. Item number one is remember the whole question of where did they daven? Okay, where was the davening going on? When they were bringing Korbanas in the second temple, okay? Who was davening where? There was a one group that was davening, the Ma'amad davened in the base of Mikdash, and the people in the town from where the Ma'amad came, they davened. But that was it. That was it, okay? So that could be a way to justify the explanation that somehow the rationale for the order was, was, was lost. A second explanation, as I said, I mentioned to Michael, that the uh, academic uh, individuals who studied Fila suggest that what happened was, we just saw in the beginning of the Amud the question of whether the restoration of the Davidic line and the rebuilding of Jerusalem should be done in one blessing or two separate blessings. Then if you're adding the Mal Shinim, you're still gonna have a complication. Do you wind up having 19 and still calling it the 18 or do you have them together? So what, so the implication that academics give is that in essence, that was the issue of the, how Shimon Afakuli handled the issue by establishing the fact that restoration of Jerusalem and Davidic monarchy is, is together in one blessing. Okay. It's not together. All right. No, if it was together, we'd put it together. Okay, he but it is together. But now it is together. No, it's two brachas. Okay. And next to each night. It's two different brachas. When he wanted, you could, some wanted to merge them. Mer question of merging or not. Okay, so that would be a possible situation of whether they're separate brachas or together. And then you added the uh, Lamal Shini. Okay. No. Right. We counted it as 19. It's 19 blessings that we call 18. Okay. Lamal Shini was added at the end. All right. Let's come back now. We're getting. This is a new a new issue. Okay. Mikan ve'elech asur l'staper b'shiv choshel ha'kadosh baruch If we say that whatever the Shimon HaFakuli did was to add the Lamal Shinim blessing, if we're going to take that as an explanation, okay? And therefore we would wind up with 19 actually instead of 18 because the two restoration, okay, were separate, all right? Then we're saying from here on, we cannot add more or make other changes or decrease. Right. What does it mean when it says What does that pasuk mean? Right. Okay. In other words, up to what point can you continue to add kavod and glory, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Okay. The more you say, you still never reach an ultimate point of glorifying and, and praising Hashem. Okay, that's the issue. Amar Rabba Bar Barchan Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Hamesaper b'shivchol shel Hakadosh Baruch Hu Yoter Midai. One who overindulges 
in glorifying and bringing praise to Hashem, what? Ne'akar min ha'olam, is uprooted from the world. Shene'amar, right, citing again, ayusufar, lo ki adaber, im amar ish ki yivla. New peace. Okay. Amar says, Darash Rabbi Yehuda, he says, ish kvar geburia, okay, indicating where he was from, va'amre la, others say, ish kvar gibur chaya. Just a different question of where he was from, right? My what does it mean, lecha dumia tehila? That silence, right, is uh, praised as initially. Sama the kula mishtuka. Okay, that the medicine, the remedy, so to speak, of all is silence. In other words, silence is the greatest praise to Hashem because no one can ever completely recite praises of Hashem and include all that's appropriate. I'm going to explain it that way. Okay? Ki ata Rav Dimi. When Rav Dimi came, Amar, all right? Amre b'marava, he said that what they say in the West, mila basela, okay? Mishtuka batarin, okay? That one word is worth a sela and silence Okay, is worth two, is all right? Okay, let's go back now to our Mishnah. Kara al peh lo yatsa. Okay, back to our issue of the fact that if one recites the Megillah, reads the Megillah by heart, he has not fulfilled his obligation. Minalan, on what basis? Amar Rava, he says, Ache zichira, zichira. We come here from a reference of zichira, remembering, which is done in another location by public reading, to remembering here in the Megillah by means of a public reading. Ketiv hacha, and it's written here, v'hayamim ha'ele nizkarim, that's from the Megillah, right? These days are to be remembered. Ketiv hatam, and it's written there, Tav Zot Zikaron Basefer. Write this. Okay, right. In, in the book, namely the episode regarding Amalek. And therefore, how do we remember Amalek? The Oraita Mitzvah to do it out loud, a public reading. Okay, namely Malahalan Basefer, Achkan Basefer. The same way there it is. Uh, reading of a text, I'm going to phrase it that way. So here too, it's reading of a text. Umimai, the high zichira kriyahi. And how do we know that this means of remembrance is done by public reading? Okay. Dilma iyun ba'alma. Perhaps it's simply reading, reading it on your own, studying it, scanning it. Okay. Lo salkadatach. Don't even think it. Consider that, says the Gemara. Dichtim zachor yechol baleid. Maybe elsewhere we have it written that maybe remembrance is done by the heart. In other words, done internally, mentally. Okay. Kashehu omer lo tishkach. Hare. Right. Don't forget. Hare shechachat halev emor that there it's talking about not forgetting from your heart, from your mind. Zachor, how then do I maintain to understand the reference to Zachor, to remember? Ba pe, with something oral, right? Okay, right. This would be a great place for a drasha on Zachor at Yom HaShabbat, the Kad show. But we won't go into that. Okay. okay. You did that three times when you were the rabbi. <laughs> okay. Namely, karat targum lo yatsa. All right. Namely, if we read it as a Aramaic translation, one has not fulfilled the obligation. Right. Hechidami. How is that the case? Asks the Gemara. E lema diktiva mikra. If we're saying it's a situation when it's written uh, in, Hebrew. 
in the Hebrew language. Vakari la targum, and he read it in the targum, okay, in, in Aramaic. Hainu al peh. That's about basically the same as reading it by heart. Lo, sricha, tektiva targum. No, we're saying, what if it's written in Aramaic? Vakare la targum. And we read it in Aramaic. Let's go on. Aval korin ota lelo azot belo But our Mishnah said to us that one could read it in a foreign language to foreigners, right? What happens? Vaha'amat kar'a bechol ha'shon lo yetza. But here we say that if we read it in any language, a different brighta, one doesn't fulfill the obligation. Rav Shmuel da Amre Travahu, the two of them said, Rav and Shmuel, Bilaaz Yivani, we're talking in the Greek language. Hechi Dami, how is that possible? Ilema de Ketiva Ashurit, Vikare la Yivanit. If we say it's written in Hebrew in Ashurit script, but it's read in Greek. Hainu al Peh, isn't again that the same? Is reading it by heart. And he translates as he goes into the Greek. Okay. All right. Hainu al Peh, that's the same as reading it by heart. Amar Rav Acha, Amar El Yelazar, says Rabbi Yelazar, Shek Tuva Beloaz Yivani. You say that it's written in Greek and it's read in Greek. Okay. Um, that's where you get the same old joke. It's Greek to me. Yeah. Says, How do we know that he called him this name? Right. Right. It says, and he called him. And here's the three words. Hail Elohe Ya Israel. The Isal Kadatach Lamizbeh Karale Yaakov Hail. If you think he was referring to the altar by that term, Vayikralo Yaakov Mibayale, then it should have simply said, and Jacob called it Ele Vayikralo Yaakov, Le Yaakov, but rather they called it according to Yaakov. El, what did he call him? Umi Karao El, and who called him? Who did he call by that name? I'll say, Elo, right? Called him by that name, Elohe Yisrael, the God of Israel. Metive Kara Yiptik, if he read it in Coptic, Ivrit, or the Old Hebrew, Ilamit, or he read it in Elamic, or Midit in Median. Yivanit, a Greek, lo yatsa, says this writer. One doesn't fulfill. So how come we say before in Greek it's okay, and now we're saying another brighter that says it's not, right? Ha, lo damya, elelaha. It's only to be compared to the following. Giptit, the giptim, okay? Coptic to the Coptics. Ivrit, the ivrim. If it's written a language from the other side of the river, then it's to those who live on the other side of the, li the river. Ilamit le ilmin. Ilamit to the ilamits. Yivanit le yivanim. Greek to the Greeks. Then yatsa. Yahachi. If that's the case, says the Gemara, Rebbe Shmuel Amai Mokme La the Mitnim Beloaz Yivanit. Why then did both Rav and Shmuel say, that it's acceptable according to our Mishnah to read it in Greek. Only if it's limited. Okay, all right, we'll see. Lukma bechola'az, let them say it. It could be written in any foreign language and not just particularly Greek. Elamat neaten kibraita, but rather our Mishnah is like the brighter, namely, and that when Rav and Shmuel said it, they said it in general. Rav and Shmuel, the Amre Travail, that the two of them said, they said that the, the uh, 
Greek would be kosher for all. Even people who like Even if they don't understand Greek the same way, Hebrew would be kosher to those, even though they may not understand Hebrew. Okay. All right. So what happens? Vahakatani Yivanit Livanim. Okay. And, but here they teach Greek for the Greeks, yes. The Kuli Almalo, but for everybody else, no. Inhu da Amur to Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. They say, like the view of Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, Ditznan, who taught Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, Omer, Af Sfarim, Lohitiru, Sheikhtavu, Ela Yivanit. Even Sifrei Torah, they did not permit in any other language except if it was written in Greek. Velimru halacha ke Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. So let us say then that the law <coughs> should be according to Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. I amre halacha ke Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. If they had said that the law was like Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, hava amina hanimili sha'ar sfarim. I would have then said that that refers to other books, other scrolls, Avam Megillah, but whereas the Megillah, Dechtiv Ba Kichtavam, where it's written as according to their style of writing, Emelo, I might say not, Kamash Malan comes to teach us that's not the case. Okay, going along. Vahalo Ez, Sheshema Asherit Yatsa. But the foreigner who hears it in Hebrew appropriate script language fulfills their obligation. But here, how we don't know what they were saying. Okay, he doesn't know, he doesn't understand it. So why do you say he's fulfilling his obligation? Okay, midi dahava anashim Why? Because we say in that case, they're similar to the fact of those people who may not be familiar, that knowledgeable of Hebrew, like certain women and certain uneducated people. Okay, what language did they speak? Aramaic, Aramaic for the most part. Okay. Matkifla Ravina. Ravina challenges this and says, Atu Anan. Okay, and we, since you've come to this, what about us? Let's take certain phrases from the Megillah. Are we so sure that we all that we understand what these phrases mean? And now the Gemara is going to give us examples, right? Hachashtar Ranim Bnei Haramachim. What about that phrase? Miyadina. Do we really know what that refers to? Ela Mitzvat Kriya Upersume Nisa. But rather we're talking about the mitzvah of the reading and fulfilling the miracle of the, of the, um, the idea of the miracle, publicizing the miracle. Hachanami, mitzvat kriya upresume nisa. Here too, we're saying they're still gonna be able to fulfill the requirements of the mitzvah of the reading and publicizing the memory. Because if somebody doesn't know, somebody won't ask, they'll have somebody else. You know, that's that's, that's one know. option. That's, that's one, one option. option. But, uh, the Mishnah Brewer brings here that although technically you can write a Megillah in any language, you have to write it only in that language. So there is <coughs> the fact that we don't know what these two words mean in a practical sense, you can't have an English Megillah. Because if I read an English Megillah and I don't understand two words, then you're not I'm finished. Right. But if I read a Hebrew Megillah yeah. and I don't understand anything, let alone these two words, you're still yours. Okay. So, in practical terms, it's difficult, if not impossible, to write Megillahs in other languages. Right. Uh, Karasirugin Yetza. Okay. We said if they read it, Okay. Uh, but we're going to find out what the word means. In a moment. Okay. If he read it, let, I'm going to use the word for the moment intermittently. Okay. All right. Stick with Sigurudin. Okay. Lo hayu, lo havu yad e rabbanan mai sirugin. 
the rabbis did not know for sure what the meaning of the word sirugin is. And now we're going to see that if you have a good cleaning lady, okay, she is uh, up on all the appropriate lashon. Okay. Shamu ala amta debe rabbi. Okay, they heard the a servant woman of the house of Rabbi de Ka'amra, who was saying laho, she's saying to the rabbis, Dahavi Aile Piske Piske La Bay Rebbe, that they would come in a few at a time intermittently to Rabbi's house. Admataya Tem Nichnasim Sirugin Sirugin. Okay, so that's how they knew what the term was. Lo Havu Yade Rabbanan Mai. Chalog Logot. The rabbis didn't know what the phrase Chalog Logot was. Sham Uha Le Amta de Be Rabbi, the Amrale Lahahu Gavra. They heard the servant woman of the house of Rebbe say to a certain person, he happened to be the gardener, okay, the Havakam Vader Par Pachaini, that he was planting seeds or purslane, Admatai Ata Mifazer. Until what time are you spreading out, you know, tossing your seeds to personally? Another example. Rabbis didn't know what that phrase meant. They again heard the servant woman of the house of Rebbe. She was saying to another person, Okay, that that person was curling their hair, right? Amrala admatai ata misalsel Up to what point do you continue to curl your hair? Another example. Lo havu yade rabbanan mai eshlech al Hashem yahavach. They didn't understand this section. Amar Rabba Bar Barchana says Rabba Bar Barchana Zim Nechada Hava Azilna Bahade Hahu Taya. One time he says I was going traveling and I was going with a certain Arab, Vika Darina Tuna, and uh, I was carrying a load. Vaamarli and he said to me Shakol Yahavech Vishade Agmalai. Okay, take your take what is yours and put it on my camel. Lo havu ya. Okay, so in other words, that's what it the phrase. Take yours and put it. Right, the bird. Lo havu ya de rabbanan. My again, the rabbis didn't know the following phrase. Vitaataate the mataate hashmed. They didn't know what that referred to. Shamhu ala amta de be rabbi. Again, they heard the <coughs> servant woman of the house of Rebbe, Dahavit Amret Lechaverta, that she was saying to one of her fellow workers, Shekoli Mitati, okay, Mitata, Vitate Beta, take a broom and sweep the house. Okay, Tanu Rabbanan. Okay. Right, in other words, if, if he said, okay, don't you need to know what the other words mean? But aren't there even phrases that we rabbis don't know? Okay, the implication being, again, even though you don't understand all the Hebrew, you're still Yotzeh. This has got to be ironical. <clears throat> They're criticizing others for not knowing language by calling them Ameoris. Yeah. And the Gemara comes back and say, you guys, you don't understand. You don't. You don't have a very good vocabulary. Either. Could be. Tanu Rabbanan, as we continue over to the next Amud. Kara Serugin Yatsa. We said that if it's read in Serugin, okay, intermittently, one fulfills the obligation. Okay. Now, on the other hand, as we go to the top of the Amud, Serusin, if it's read out of order, now, here's an interesting dis, dis opinion, uh, opinion. According to the Yerushalmi, that means skipping verses. According to the Gaonim and Rashi, it means reading it in the wrong order. Okay? So, what happens? Lo yatsa. 
one doesn't fulfill their obligation. Okay. Now, Rabbi Muna, right? New name for us. Omer Mishum Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Rabbi Yehuda. Af Beserugin, even if it's read intermittently. In other words, you start it, let's say, at the at, with the morning davening at the seven o'clock minion. Again, you only hear part of it, and then you had to do something, but you came back at the 8.30 minion to hear the rest of it. I'm using, I'm, that, I'm using that as a brief example, okay? Im shaha k'day ligmor et kula chozer rosh. Okay, if the amount of time that you uh, had in between was enough to complete the entire Megillah, okay? You have to go back to the beginning, okay? Amar Rav Yosef, says Rav Yosef, halacha Rabbi Mona, she'amar mishum Rabbi Yehuda. The law is like Rabbi Mona in the name of Rabbi Yehuda. Amar le'abai, the Rav Yosef, k'day ligmor et kula. When, it's, when he said, you have to finish the whole thing, mehecha dekai, from where he left off until the end, Odilma Miresha the Sefa. Or maybe we say from the very beginning to the end. Or the time it takes to read the whole thing. Sefa. He said to him from the beginning to the end, the whole Gansi Megillah. The Im Kain. Why? Natata Divarecha the Shiurim. Otherwise, you'd say that there was no valid arrangement or no regulations time. from the rabbis. Okay. Amar Rabbi Abba, Amar Rabbi Yirmiya. So Rabbi Abba, in the name of Rabbi Yirmiya, Ba Abba, Amar Rab, Halacha Rabbi Mona. The law is like Rabbi Mona. Shmuel Amar, ain Halacha Rabbi Mona. But Shmuel disagrees from with Rab and says the law is not like Rabbi Mona. Besura, Matnu hachi, and in Surah that's how they taught it. For Pampadita, Matnu hachi, and in Pampadita they taught it this way. Amar Rav Kahana, Amar Rav. Rav Kahana said in the name of Rav, Halacha Rabbi Mona, that the law was like Rabbi Mona. Shmuel Amar ain Halacha Rabbi Mona, and Shmuel says the law is not like Rabbi Mona. Rav Bivi Matne Ipcha, and Rav Bivi taught it the opposite way. Namely, Rav Amar ain halacha k'Rabbi Mona. Rav said the law is not like Rabbi Mona. Shmuel Amar halacha k'Rabbi Mona, and Shmuel said the law is like Rabbi Mona. Now, Amar Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef tells us, "Nikot de Rabbi biyadecha." Take hold of the view. I'm going to say the position of Rav Bibi in your hand. The Shmuel who. Why? Because Shmuel was the one who was suspect for an individual, as in the following case. The Tznan is taught elsewhere in regards to a situation where we have women, two women, one of whom who is a, a, a sister to another, and one sister's husband has died without children. And therefore, she is waiting to see what is going to be the status of the Yibum situation. And the, and the other sister happens to be, well, we're going to get to that in a moment. All right. So one sister, let's call it sister, the older sister for the moment, is waiting to her, is in the status of Yibum. Shekidesh Echiv at Achoto. But the brother, Okay, one of the brothers is engaged, a younger brother is engaged to a young, the younger sister, okay, to her sister. Mishum Rabbi Yehuda ben Batera Amru, in the name of Rabbi Yehuda ben Batera, what did they say? Omrim lo hamten. They say to the guys engaged, wait, hold off, ad shiase achicha hagadol, until another one of your older brothers fulfills the requirement of Yibum, right? Okay, now, Ma'aseh, okay, Amar Shmuel, 
And in a situation like this, this incident, Shmuel said, Halacha ke Rabbi Yehuda ben Batayra, that the law is like Rabbi Yehuda ben Batayra. Okay. Tana Rabbanan. Okay. We come back to our, our new bright. Ishmit ba sofer otiot. Let's say a scribe is working on the Megillah and he accidentally left out certain letters. O psukim, or he accidentally left out certain entire verses. Okay. Vikaran hakore, kemeturgaman hamitargain. And the person who was reading the Megillah. Okay, he continues to read it, okay, as a maturgaman. In other words, he would recite what is not there. Okay, that's the point. Yatsa, one's obligation is fulfilled. Metive, but we challenge this, okay, by the following writer. Hayuba otiot matushtashot. Let's say they were blurred letters. Oh, or torn letters. Okay. Im Rishuman Nikar. If their imprint is recognizable, Shera, it is valid. Vim love, and if not, Pisula, it is invalid. Lokasha. There's nearly no problem, he says, between these two brightas. Ha Bikula. In one case, we're talking about the whole Megillah, then it would be unfit. Ha b'miktsata. Here we're only talking about a small section, and then it would be fit. Tanu Rabbanan, the new brighter. Hishmit b'hakore pasuk echad. If the person reading the Megillah omitted one verse, lo ya'amar ekra ad et kula ve'achar kach ekra oto pasuk, he can't say, well, I'll continue reading and then the whole rest of the Megillah and go back and replace the verse that I left out. <clears throat> but he reads from that verse and continues. <clears throat> Somebody comes in late to show and he comes in and he finds that the community is in the middle of the Megillah reading. Okay? Lo ye'amar ekra chatsya im hatsibur ve'achar kach ekra chatsya. He can't say, well, I'll read the rest along with the congregation. Then I'll go back and read what I missed on my own. Ela kore ota mitchilata va'ad sofa. But rather he must read it from beginning to end. Here's a now another back to our Mishnah. Mitnam name Yatsa. If he was dozing, I've used that explanation, right? And still fulfills the obligation. Hechidami, Mitnam name. What do we mean when we say he's dozing? Okay, Amar Rav Ashi, Nim Velo Nim, Tir Velo Tir. He's nodding off, okay? Sort of awake, not awake. Sort of sleeping, sort of not sleeping. The karule, they call to him. Va'ane, and he's able to answer. Velo yada, lahadrure savra. But he can't render some sort of a clear logical statement. Vachi mid, midikro, okay, le midkar. But when they remind him of something, yes, he's able then to remember. Okay, again, haya kodva dorsha umagia. Okay, if a person was writing the Megillah, but he was reading it and writing, expounding it, reading and expounding, magia, correcting it, reading and correcting. Im kivan li bo yatsa, says our Mishnah. If his intent was such, he's fulfilling the obligation. Hey, chidami, how is that possible? If he's articulating of one verse at a time, vikatavla and writes it, bo. If he's directing his heart, mai What is he doing then? 
Alpehu. Isn't that similar to doing it by heart? Ela de katav psuka psuka vakari lein. But rather he's writing one pasuk at a time, and then he reads what he excuse me, wrote. Umiyatsa, and is he really fulfilling his obligation that way? Amar Rabbi Chelbo Amar Rav Chama Bar Guria Amar Rav in the name of Rav. <coughs> Excuse me. Halacha Kedivrei Ha'almei Kula. La is like the one who says it in its entirety. Va'afilu Laman Da Amar Meish Yehudi, and even according to the ones who says he's not reading it from the beginning but rather only from a location in the second chapter, okay, of the Megillah, where it starts Ish Yehudi, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, referring to Mordechai, right? Right, Sricha. Right, Sricha Shetehek Tuvakula. It has to be written in its entirety. Ela, what? Dimancha Megillah Kame. But rather there's a Megillah stretched out in front of him. Okay, Vikari Lamina Psuka Psuka. And he's reading from it one verse at a time. Vikatavla, and then he writes that verse. Right? In a new cloth. Right. Lema Misayele the Rabba Barbachana. Shall we say then that this supports the view of Rabba Barbachana? Da Amar Rabbi Bar Bachana Amar Rabbi Yochanan, who says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Asur Lichtov Ot Echad Shalom in Aktav. It's prohibited to write even one letter, uh, except from something already in print. I'm going to use that phrase. All right, Dilma de Itrame Le Itramuye. All right, because why? Unless it happens to be before him. All right. Gufa. Oh, wait. Is he copy from he copies from, from a, a that's what this text. is saying. He, 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 he doesn't copy from a clock. He copies from a no no, you have to copy it from a clock. You have to copy from a clock. You can't copy from a picture. Photocopy is unacceptable. No, no, no. But the uh, simile is not acceptable. <laughs> Not clearly, not when you're blaming, but when you're writing a safe. No, you have he to writes, copy from he writes, he writes from a, a, a kosher safe. How about with the Megillah? Do you have to copy from, yeah, from a, a kosher cloud. Okay. You remember um, when we started, I suggested that one of the questions in the back of our mind is that since the Megillah has to be written on a cloth in Ashurit, right. in Hebrew, just like a safe Torah, are we going to come across? other examples where they both follow the same halach. Okay, All right. One other example that I think some people aren't always familiar with is the question of, does it have to be read standing? Okay, keep that in mind. That's another example, okay? All right, let's go on. Gufa, let's come back to what we saw before. Amar Rabba Bar Barchana Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Asur lichtov ot echad shalom in aktav. All right. He's saying clearly, according to Rabba Bar Barchana, name Rabbi Yochanan, it's forbidden, right? Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar. He says, Maaseh be Rabbi Meir. A case with Rabbi Meir. Shalach la aber shana ba Asia. And he went and traveled to incalculate the year in Asia Minor. Because he couldn't do it in Eretz Yisrael, right? Velo hayasham megila, and he didn't have a megi. Why? What's the point? When is the extra month added? Adar. So that's where he was doing it, okay? And he didn't have a megila handy. So what did he do? Lo hayasham megila v'kadva milibo v'kara, and he wrote it by heart. Okay, and read it. By the way, we all should be familiar with what kind of profession was Rabbi Meir? He was a sofer professional. Okay, Amar Rabbi Abahu says as follows, Shani Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir is a unique case, right? 
the Mikhaim Bay, because we maintain about him, your eyes are always your eyelids, your focus, right? Okay. Amarle, Rami Barchama, the Rabbi Yermia, says to me, me difte, what did he tell him? My What does that mean? Amarlo, he said to him, Elu divrei Torah, Dichtiv Baho. Those are the words of Torah as it's written. And even that, Misharin Hain Eitzel Rabbi Meir. Okay, Rabbi Meir again was a unique case. Now, Rav Chista Ishkechel Rav Chananel, the Havei Ketav Sreim Shalom in a Ketav, a situation where Rav Chista found the Rav Chananel, who was writing Sifrei Torah, right, without a Model, I'm going to say model text. Okay. Amarle, Ruya Koha Torah Kula Likate Val Picha. First, he gives him a compliment. It's worthy that a Torah be written by you, okay, even if you're doing it by heart. Ela Kacham Ruchachamim. But rather, the sages say, Asur Lechtov Ot Echat Shalom and Aktav. They say that it's forbidden to do so. Does this seem to imply, since he gave him a nice compliment, that writing a Torah with a, by heart is acceptable, right? By him. Vaha Rabbi Meir Katav Shat Hatichak Shani. And here we saw like Rabbi Meir wrote, no, the answer is extenuating circumstances. That was the situation with Rabbi Meir. Now, let's try to finish up. Abaye shara ledebei bar chabo. Abaye permitted those stofrim of the house of bar chabo, lemiktav tefillin umuzuzot shalom in aktav not to write the parchment for tefillin and mezuzahs from a pre-existing text. Keman, according to whom? Ki hai tana, like the following tana. The tanya rabbi Yirmiya, as rabbi Yirmiya taught, omer mishum rabbeinu, who said in the name of rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, tefillin and mezuzot, nechtavot shalom in aktan. Tefillin and mezuzahs may be written not from a pre-existing text. Ve'en trichot sartut, and they don't need scoring, right? Ve'hilchata, and the law is tefillin en trichin sartut, tefillin don't need scoring, mezuzot trichin sartut. Mezuzot, however, do need scoring. So the Gemara tells us, idi ve'idi, both these and these can be written not from a pre-existing text. Ma'itama, what's the reasoning? Migras grisin. They are fluent. In other words, they are well known by heart by these suffering. Okay, and I'm gonna, uh, well, I'll just finish the line. Haitak tuva basam. But it said, what about it was written in these are the things? Sam, Sama, okay, Sam is a lemon yellow dye. Sikra, Amar Rabba Barchana, Sikrata, that's a red dye. Shma Kumus, Kankuntim Akuma, that's a sap a raisin. So tomorrow we'll pick up on the top of Yutet, okay, a little bit more in terms of that definition. Okay. Writing is more stringent than. No, but here's the thing. No, not really. Here's the thing. You don't know which way. So therefore, you can't write any. There is one special.